Hey, hi, this is Anna from Scalar. And in today's episode of Refactor, we will be talking about AI models like ChatGPT, GPT-3, GitHub Copilot, and all of them. One of the questions that I keep hearing from a lot of people, especially on, on social media, people have been discussing this a lot, is whether these tools will take away my job, right? And then by my, I mean, a lot of people, different people are asking that from software engineers to graphic designers. Everybody is asking whether my job is uh, under threat because of what these uh, AI tools can do. I'm not an expert in uh, machine learning and not somebody who can build tools like this. So I'll just at least try to give you a breakdown of what these tools really are. So OpenAI, by the way, the company which has been making all of these tools, including GitHub Copilot, by the way, has been do, trying to work on this for uh, many years now. Uh, GPT, the original version, and then GPT-2, when it came out, it did not make this much news, actually, as much as when GPT-3 came out. But they've been working on this uh, for a while now. And then we are talking about basically three kinds of things. One is code generation, which is what GitHub Copilot does. Uh, one is uh, very natural uh, language, prompt-based text generation, which is basically what GPT does, which is more general purpose in uh, nature. And uh, then there is DAL-E, which is made by uh, OpenAI, but there are some people who have made very open source alternatives also called Stable Diffusion and Mid-Journey, etc. These are art generators. They generate art. At the heart of it lies something very similar though, which is uh, something called large language models. So these are, uh, so what how machine learning works is that you feed them a lot of data and, and based on that, it can learn what kind of, let's say, a string of words, which string of words makes even sense. Like if you just jumble up a sentence and generate that, that won't make sense. So saying words in what order makes even sense. And if it makes sense, you either supervise the learning for that model uh, and then tell them that, okay, uh, we reward you for writing sentences in the correct order, punish you for not writing sentences in the wrong, in the writing sentences in the wrong order and so forth. And like that, these models are trained. So there are two layers to it. One is the natural language processing part where these you know tools are basically reading the inputs from us where we are saying that, hey, chat GPT, can you uh, explain to me how React works? now? Understanding this prompt, because this is basically spoken English, it's not like a query language where, you know, HTTP API.openAI.com slash prompt Q equal to React, not like that. It's it's not very machine readable in that sense. It's a very human readable prompt. Understanding that and understanding what is the intent out of it is one part of the problem. The next part is actually that model explaining to you what React is. And to do that, the model itself needs to know what React is. So what large language models are, and these are, generally shortened to LLMs, why we call them, because these models, particularly the recent ones that have come out, GPT and Copilot, they are trained over a very large data set. And by very large, it means like, um, if, if you have worked with convolutional neural networks or deep learning models, you know that there are generally a certain set of parameters, which then you use as weights and you create the network. Um, the number of parameters that GPT-3 works on is I think 170 billion, which is a huge, huge, huge number, which means that you can't actually run GPT-3 model on a local GPU on your computer, or you can't even run it on, on a local GPU farm. You will need actually a supercomputer for something like that to learn because of the number of models. Training that even on the supercomputer takes days, sometimes months uh, to train that model. Running that model itself, uh, like generating uh, the text from that model also takes a lot of you know time. That's why like when you enter the prompt in most of these models, you get the answer back at least 10, 15 seconds later and not within 0.01 second like Google search gives you. Because it's not fetching it from a database. It's actually generating that text. You're putting a prompt into the neural network model and based on the parameters, generating some text. Okay, that's essentially how it works. A deep for a deeper understanding, obviously you can Google and you know find better explanations than what I can give you. But coming to um, what is the implication? Can it actually take away people's jobs and everything? Let's talk about that. So today, the way these models work, and then I will take up a few uh, statements that I've heard from other people and I've heard on social media and break them apart. One of them is people saying that hey, this is better than Google search. Because if you search something on Google, sometimes some of the top few results are ads and sometimes you get SEO related blog posts and you don't get an actual answer. While GPT might give you a good answer. The fallacy in that statement is that if you search for something where you know the actual answer, then you can validate the answer that GPT gives you. 
and and decide that okay the answer that gpt gave me is correct because i know what is correct but what if you were searching something that you don't know yourself with google what happens is generally you go to a few search results and maybe there's a forum article somebody has written maybe somebody has written an argument against that underneath it so you have a open mind and you have open eyes and you're trying to figure out whether what information you're gathering is correct or not versus gpt gives you a very assertive answer like if you ask gpt like you know tell me why react is better than angular and it will give you a certain answer and then if you ask tell me why angular is better than react it might give you basically the same answer with the same set of points uh, replacing react with angular now that can't be true like if somebody says that react is better than angular because react is faster to build in let's just assume that whether or not it's correct let's take that as an argument now if you ask tell me why angular is better than react and gpt uh, might say and this is something that i actually tried out myself it might say that angular is better than react because angular is faster to build obviously that means that one of these statements would be wrong the problem is that gpt is is while it is an ai model it's not really human like intelligence where gpt does not really believe something to be true or false gpt does not know what is right or wrong gpt takes a prompt and based on whatever 170 billion parameters it has it takes the prompt sees that okay this question is about react and it's about angular it figures that react and angular are web frameworks so in web frameworks there is a concept of building maybe i can create a text using these information so gpt is basically trying to generate a paragraph using some related information it knows and the best thing you might be able to relate to it is sometimes when you are in a job interview and somebody asks you a question which you know what the topic is about but you don't really know how it actually works but you try to basically uh, bullshit your way through that answer that's how a lot of answers from gpt might look like because that's exactly how the model works and that's also uh, the reason why i will come to the second part which is can copilot actually write code for you can github copilot or any other codex model uh, by open ai in future can entirely write a program let's say i say i want to build a login form and it generates that for me the thing is that it can actually can like if you say that make a login form in react and html today copilot as well as in fact uh, on chat gpt if you ask this question it will give you some code it will generate uh, to you and uh, in all likelihood it might actually be a working login form the problem though is because gpt is generating what it feels like is most likely answer for when you ask to build a login form but it does not technically know that what does a get request do or what does a post request do or that if i send wrong parameter name inside the post uh, parameter it won't actually get submitted in the form this is something that copilot or gpt does not actually know which means that the code that is generated by tools like github copilot often happens is the if condition might be slightly reversed or maybe the boolean where it is supposed to be used true might be used as false because it's basically trying to generate some lines of code which should look like as if it's doing login form but it does not really know like a web developer knows how to build a login form it's again very much like you know trying to answer a question which you don't know a detailed answer but you still try to speak for 2 minutes about it that's how gpt will essentially generate that the downside to that obviously means that if you want uh, to to use github copilot to generate code you will still need at the very least code reviews pr reviews or most likely you would need somebody who would actually be operating github code pilot uh, github copilot and editing the code on the fly because some of the code generated would be wrong that's the current scenario uh, if we talk about it then coming to the third one which is about image generation art generation which uh, models like dal e are able to do and there are open source tools like mid journey and stable diffusion where these are all doing now what these tools are doing again um, they have been trained on millions and millions of paintings and artwork and graphics and based on that generating that now the thing is that if you have done any graphic design work you know that what you are generating is not like painting an oil painting it's not like you know painting on the canvas you are generating lots of assets the text could be an asset the logo is an asset the shapes and all and and if somebody wants to create different uh, adapts so in the design world it's called adapt which is like you make a rectangular one for um, uh, let's say youtube thumbnail you make a square one for a instagram post now when you go from one adapt to another it helps to have an actual open file where you can change the shapes around you can move the text you can change the size of the text and everything 
But what these AI models today generate are not open files, which means that if you generate a design from OpenAI, it's very much like a painting. You can't change the layer. There are no layers. There are no objects there. The text is not selectable. GPT, even when it is writing any text or when it is creating somebody's face and all inside the image, it's just painting like an oil painting. You can't separate the layers. You can't think that, okay, I will take this person out of the image and replace that with a different person. You can't do that in post editing because you don't actually have an open file. You get a straight up bitmap file or a PNG file out of it. The other problem also is that, again, because these models don't really know a lot of factual information, they are appro approximating a lot of things. While the art might look beautiful at an abstract level, you will find that uh, people's hands in these images tend to often have four fingers or six fingers or even sometimes you know, no fingers or 10 fingers. Why? Because uh, these models don't really know that a human hand is supposed to have five fingers. Uh, when you try to build, uh, have images of actually animals and all, again, the positioning of eyes and nose and all start changing even more because again, it does not really know that let's say I'm making a blue whale, should it have teeth, should it not have teeth, whether the fin would be in the center of the body or the beginning of the body. It does not know these facts actually. So it has seen images of a lot of blue whales and uh, there have been a lot of hundreds or thousands of images fed to this model, tagged as this is an image of a whale, it has seen them. And based on seeing all of these images, it's trying to approximate that and generate another image like that. So if you give, uh, uh, let's say, an open AI model, um, one lakh or, or one crore images of hands of people, some of those images might not have all the fingers in them. Some of these images, let's say, is like this. So now three fingers are visible here. There might be some images where because there are two hands together visible in the image, it might look like there are 10 fingers in it. So when it sees all these images and based on that tries to generate a image of a hand which is similar to the images it has already seen, but it does not know the actual human anatomy fact that humans have five fingers, you end up with these problems where the images might have more or less fingers and all. So essentially what it really means is that these are very good tools in the hand of actually creators today. Uh, let's say when I am doing some graphic design work and uh, I want to generate a background and I have some image in my mind that I want a starry background with, you know, twilight shade in it and I want a sunset happening and I want that background. And on top of that background, I will add some of my assets and make a proper marketing graphic around that. But this background that I have in my mind, I don't have to go out and actually paint it in Photoshop uh, or I don't want to paint it in my iPad or do something like that. Um, what I can do is ask GPT to just generate this background and it can generate five, six alternatives for me and I can pick one of them. And then I can do the rest of the graphic design work on top of it. So it becomes a great tool. Similarly, GitHub Copilot is something that I personally use a lot every day. So sometimes if you start writing a function and at the top of the function, you write a comment that here we will sort everything by the age of the person. And then as soon as you press enter, it generates the code for that. It helps a lot to get that code. Often it happens that in the code that it generates, uh, the name of the variable that it is using, let's say inside a loop or something, is not the name of the actual variable that I have uh, previously in my code. So I'll have to replace the name of the variable. Sometimes I'll have to fix a if condition or I have to fix a switch case because again, it's approximate code. There is no way for GitHub Copilot to actually run the code that it generated and test it whether it works or not. All of those things I have to do. But then again, in, in my hands as a software engineer, it's a great tool because it reduces the time that it takes for me to write that code because if it's 50 lines of code, I would have typed them line by line, letter by letter. Now I write a comment, I start writing a function, it generates the 50 lines and then I go and fix two or three lines inside that. You know, does it make me think like in the current format, it can replace my job and write entire code? No, but do I think this definitely makes my job of writing software 10x easier? Uh, does it make me at least in terms of time spent 10x more productive? Yes, it does. Do I feel like GPT looking at that code understands the rest of the structure of my program? It does not really do that. Sometimes it might try to sort a linked list in an array list way. And then I realize that, oh, it does not really understand that the variable that has been supplied is actually a linked list. It's not an array list and you can't iterate through and do a bubble sort over it. So those kind of things do happen. 
uh, but i'm very optimistic as to what other applications of these things would be today as a as, as somebody who loves creating things and building things one thing you definitely can do is build a lot of things on top of this so there are people who have uh, built uh, using dali they have built a ai based avatar generator somebody has said that okay submit your photo and we will generate a photo where you are sitting inside a private jet uh, submit your photo and we will generate a photo of you sitting on goa's beach right that's a great thing i mean people can generate instagram photos where they're actually visiting a place and somebody who has made a product like this uh, they can charge you money for that they can say okay give me 5 dollars for every photo that you generate so whoever has built this tool on top of dali they have built it using basically web development tools but also understanding how the prompts in dali works so they have had to understand how dali actually works a little bit and they have used normal web development technologies and they have built a product on top of it and they are making money out of it right and these kind of opportunities will increase obviously as these models become more widespread and easy to use GPT itself is not a model that is possible to run on consumer grade hardware but uh, stable diffusion for example can be run on actual GPUs or on consumer grade hardware uh, you can run that so you can make an art generator the other thing is uh, because a lot of companies will start incorporating these large models into their workflows let's say in support queries somebody asked maybe the first layer might be today's bots are more decision tree driven where somebody like you, you make an order on Zomato or Swiggy and then your order does not come, you go to support, says what happened and it gives you five, op five options. You pick one of them. Food did not get delivered. Then it asks, when did you place the order? One hour back or, or you know, uh, less than one hour back. A lot of that, you pick an option. Then it says, do you want a refund? So it's very decision tree. It's actually an if else condition turned into really a bot uh, in this space, right? Now, this, if we look at how AI tools can augment that, is that you would feel like you're talking to a human being and as long as the level of expertise needed and then the level of expertise needed to just understand that your food did not get delivered or it was cold and we should give a refund for it or something while this expertise needed might not be a lot to just drive these five six sentences of conversation you would not even feel that you're not talking to an actual human being be talking to a gpt run bot but those applications will happen and this in turn will lead to a lot of software engineering jobs being generated where there are existing workflows where large language model tools will get injected into them and you will have to create those pipelines. So I hope that answers the question on whether your job is going to get affected by GPT or Copilot or DALI or not. If you like uh, videos like this more, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, please uh, like and share this. Thank you so much.